Uh, in this video, I will demonstrate my technique of corneal relaxing incisions. My name is Jason Jones, and I have no financial interest in any of the products demonstrated or discussed. Uh, in this example here, I am drying the limbal marks that I placed uh, preoperatively at the slit lamp. This is done using a Sinsky hook. Uh, the conjunctival fornices are dried and then these preoperative marks are highlighted using an intraoperative Sinsky hook uh, with uh, blue dye. Note here that the 0 and 180, 180 degree marks are just parallel to the reference marks placed at the limbus. Using the same Sinsky hook I'm going to denote the 115 degree axis that can be read on the outer bevel of this reference ring. And I also ensure that I have proper placement of my main wound with a mark as well at 25 degrees. So it's 90 degrees off from our intended relaxing incision. The ring is then rotated and the uh, marks are then placed for a 45 degree arc measuring out on each side of the uh, reference mark made just in the previous step. You can see that the inner bevel here has an easy uh, readout to arcuate length on either side of the zero degree mark. Although I do like to step out this, these values to ensure that I have a proper arcuate length. Now I use uh, several elements to ensure that I have good keratometry, in particular automated IOL Master or Linstar Ks, manual Ks, and topography Ks, and I will look at glasses RX or refraction um, for both astigmatism value and meridian. You want to use topography to you ensure that you're working on regular astigmatism and avoid non-orthogonal or irregular patterns. In the planning phase, I use the Nikkerman Napa nomogram, which can be found at lricalculator.com. My incision is for relaxation is placed on the steep K and the main wound on the flat or steep. Pachymetry is important and I use a DGH or MMD device which will measure peripheral readings well and get three readings over the intended arc. In this case here, for an example, we have a middle reading of 692 minus 10% gives us 623 and so I'm going to use 620. In this example here, 10% off the 700 middle value will give 630, so I'll either use 630 or I'll confirm the 630 reading. Now it's important to look at the zero mark uh, to ensure that your blade does not extend beyond the foot plate prior to advancing the blade to the desired depth. And it's important to rotate the barrel up to the desired depth marking and not go past it. If you've gone past, go back down and come back up. The blade is then plunged into the corneal tissue at the mark. I like to incise towards me, so I'm dragging this blade towards me. And if you have to do a little touch-up, as can be seen here, you can go back in. Sometimes it's helpful to lift and reset down in just to get a little bit extra depth uh, and length. Uh, on this uh, side here, you can see that I'm once again incising towards me. I've not quite followed the arc of this uh, ring device, which can be very helpful. Um, so I've just relaxed my grip and continued on. Paracentesis and main wound are then fashioned in a routine manner, uh, making sure that we use the reference mark for the main wound. Uh, in this case here, you can see that I have a intraoperative illuminating keratoscope. This is also from Mestel, and it can be used as a helpful guide uh, intraoperatively. Notice the oval orientation of the marks uh, of the keratoscope. So once again, we reveal the marks uh, made in by reference uh, at the slit lamp, and we dry the fornices. This is very important. You want to make sure you have a dry fornix. Uh, as the ring will imbibe fluid and then obscure your marks at the limbus as well as the marks that you create. Uh, this is a um, two-ray marker and uh, will 
we'll be placing this in relaxing incision at 100 degrees. So I like to touch down on one side and then orient myself to the opposite. Once again, we'll place a mark for the main wound. The ring is then rotated and we're going to do a 55 degree arc touching down on one side and then to the other. And uh, once again, placing a similar mark here. Now it's very helpful to look for symmetry of your marks to ensure that you actually have marked off all of these accurately. I will often touch up these uh, marks with additional methylene blue uh, using a Sinsky hook. The methylene blue is obtained from Hurricane Medical and this gives a long-lasting effect, uh, certainly adequate for these procedures. Once again you need to check the reference zero mark and then rotate the barrel up to the desired depth. Here this is a fine Thornton ring used in a more freehand technique, uh, we're at about a 9 uh, to 10 millimeter optical zone. And the epithelium here does want to lift slightly, so in this example, I'm lifting the blade out of the LRI and then replacing it back down in. Uh, this helps the epithelium settle down in the region that's wanting to lift and reduces. Uh, tears which are uncomfortable although generally well tolerated. Once again you plunge the blade in, drawing the blade towards the surgeon. A slight rotational movement. I tend to find that epithelium is usually loose uh, in one side not both although this can be the case to have both loose so it's uh, good to be aware of this uh, potential issue. And once again, the main wounds uh, and the paracentesis are placed outside of these uh, relaxing incisions. And uh, at the conclusion of the case, or after this uh, LRI, you can note the roundness of the keratoscopic view. In this example here, we're placing uh, our main wound on axis as well as using a, an LRI. Uh, you also see here this technique of lifting the blade and replacing it. This also tends to help if you're having any issues of rotation uh, in orienting your blade in, a, in an arcuate uh, manner. Now for the main wound, the incision is made in essentially the same manner, however it is slightly more peripheral. And you can see here we're going to get some heme that does fill this channel and helps to delineate where we've incised. the posterior edge of the wound is depressed and the main wound is made centrally in this LRI. Now in placing the IOL I find it helpful to slightly enlarge this wound. I use a 2.2 millimeter internal wound uh, and I find that uh, it's easier just to enlarge this just slightly so that there's less tension on the incision as the lens is placed and they seal incredibly well. Thank you for your attention.